I'm Ginny Beyer. I'm a quilt maker, first and foremost. I'm also a shop owner. I've written several quilting books and I'm a fabric designer. And I hope today on this video to share some of my insights in terms of working with borders, a lot of other aspects of quilting. So I'm going to show you how you put a border around a quilt. I'm demonstrating with a single block here, but it's the same exact thing if you're putting it around a big quilt as, as a single block. You don't need a lot of tools for this. You need a few simple items, scissors or a rotary cutter, something to mark your line, and a right angle. Now, there's various ways to have a right angle. Some people have the rulers that have a right angle marked I have my tool that I've designed, the perfect piecer, and I've got a line here and I have the perfect right angle um, along here. Or I have been known when I've been in a hotel room and I don't have any tools with me, I'll just go get a piece of the hotel stationery and I will fold it at a right angle and I will use that as my right angle. You just heard me say right angle when I was folding that piece of paper. In fact, what I was actually doing was making a 45 degree angle. The right angle is the side of the corner of a square and you divide that in half diagonally and you get your 45 degree angle. And that's what we use for all of the miters we're using on quilts and borders for quilts. This is an example of how you add a border to a square quilt. First of all, I've pre-cut my strips of fabric, the border fabric that I'm going to use. To get the correct measurement, you always measure across the middle of the quilt, not the edge. I'm going to show you something. This is a single block, but if I pull this to the center and measure it out, you're going to see that this is a little bit, like almost even a half inch wider at the edge. Why is that? I've got some bias edges here, I've got a seam. You're going to find that almost always the measurement along the edge of the quilt is wider than it is across the middle. The middle is the correct measurement. So I will measure for my mitered edge across the middle. Now the first thing I have to do is determine the exact middle of the quilt and I will put a mirror image portion of the design right at the middle. That way it's going to come out in the same place on either side. Then I take my right angle, whether it's this ruler like this or whether it's my perfect piecer, and line it up with the miter line here exactly along the bottom line of the quilt. One of the nice things about this method is there's no math involved. So you're going to line up the line from the ruler, this perfect right angle, and you move it over until you find the place where the edge of the strip hits the edge of the quilt. So you're going to go, 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 and you're going to stop right here. Then you take your marking tool. I love using this Clover Taylor's chalk for marking. Carefully pick this up and cut it. You don't want to disturb your center line point. And then carefully fold this edge over until you line up the design exactly to the other side. You see how I'm getting that design? And then I can pick it up and I will cut this miter exactly the same as the other miter. And so what you end up having is this strip comes right out to the edge of the seam allowance. You've got the mirror in the middle and we've got the design ending at exactly the same place on either end. Once I have that first piece cut, that's my guide or my pattern for cutting the additional pieces. I'll take another piece of the border and I will lay it out and I will lay this on top of it and exactly line up the design one more time. So I'm making that miter exactly the same and then I will just carefully cut that to exactly the same angle. I've cut these two that are now identical pieces and then you will cut two more that are the same. I've already pre-cut my two extra pieces and I can show you they would go around the edge of the quilt like this. Four pieces, they all end at exactly the same place, so when they sew together, you're going to have that design flowing around the edge of the quilt. Before we sew these on, though, you have to mark your seam allowance on this side. Lay that quarter inch right along the line, and you can make that mark, and you can also do the mark again. So the first thing I will do is begin by pinning at the very center of the quilt. I'm going to pin it at the center, then I'll pin at the edge. 
right where the seam allowances would cross because you don't sew all the way to the edge you're going to start right where the seam allowances start because we need that little Y seam and then you just pull it and just ease in any extra fullness put the pins all along you can do the same on the other side and then you just start sewing what you're going to sew is dot to dot you'll have both edges of this marked and stop at the dot I sew all four pieces on first and then I will sew the miter up last. So here you can see the block finished, the mitered corners where the design flows around the corner all the way around. So the question comes, what happens if my quilt isn't square? How do I get the perfect miter corners then? The process is exactly the same with one little extra step. First of all, I cut the pieces for the short sides exactly the way as I cut the pieces for the square. So here I've got my two pre-cut squares, you know, by measuring across the middle exactly the same way we've got the two pieces cut. Then I need to figure on what am I going to do for the sides. The first thing, we know the miters have to match, so that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to lay one of these sh short pieces along the border print exactly line it up so the miters match perfectly we're using that as our pattern and guide and then I'm just going to cut the miter that exactly matches now here's my short piece I don't need that right now what I need is to lay this miter once again remember across the middle of the quilt so I'm lining the edge of the miter right up with the edge of the quilt and I'm coming right to the center. So here's my center line. Then I'm going to put my ruler right at the center line. I'm going to put the dotted line on the ruler. So I've got the dotted line right here at the center and I'm going to mark one quarter inch from the center right there and cut it off. That's allowing my seam allowance because the side pieces are actually not going to be one piece but two. So now we have the piece cut exactly half the length of the quilt plus a quarter inch here because we need another piece that's exactly the opposite of it, the mirror image or the flip side. So we're going to now flip this upside down. I'm going to match the design exactly here. So I've got the design upside down on here, the back side, and then I'm going to cut another miter that is the exact opposite or mirror image or reversed of what we already did. I'm going to have this exactly the same length. Pattern matches perfectly. Okay, so now I have two identical but reversed. I mean, they're, they're identical. The one is the reverse of the other. And we need two exactly the same. So what I'll do is I'll just take a new piece of border print, lay it out. I'll lay this one on top of this and get the design to match up perfectly and mark it and cut it. And I'll lay this one out as well on top of the border print, mark and cut it. The first step that you have to make is to sew this center seam on these two pieces that go on the long side of the quilt. So you'll sew one center seam, you'll sew the other center seam on the other side, and then attaching the borders is exactly the same as for the square. You mark your starting and stopping point at the edge, carefully pin it, sew them on. When the borders go onto the quilt, here you see where the seam is, but if you look at the hole, you're not noticing that seam. It is a mirror image motif and it flows seamlessly around the quilt. And that's the secret, is by having that seam at the middle of the long sides of the quilt. And look at the finished product. You always measure across the middle of the quilt to get the correct measurement. You make sure that you have a mirror image portion of the design at the center of the strip. That ensures that the edges will stop at the, exactly the same spot. You use the first strip you cut as a guide to cut three more identical pieces. Then you pin them carefully, easing in any extra fullness. You sew dot to dot, and then sew the miters last. The process for a rectangular quilt is identical to the square, the same initial steps, but the way we get these long strips is to have a seam at the middle. 
I almost always frame my quilts with border prints or a combination of border prints and patchwork. They really add the perfect ending to a quilt, sort of like a frame and mat do for a beautiful piece of art that you would hang on your wall. I hope you'll give it a try.